Okay, so you're probably wondering why this shot that looks so bad is the intro shot to a video about color grading. But maybe you're not wondering because maybe you realize this is shot in a log format, which means there's no saturation, color, or lighting adjustments made in the final product when you're watching it like this. However, I'm going to teach you in today's video how to take this shot from this to this in about four steps and maybe five minutes of your time. But also do keep in mind that these four steps as well as my process in general is probably on the less professional, more stylized my version of it, if you would, side of things. Meaning that it probably and most likely is not the correct and 100% professional way to do it. However, you guys seem to like the way the footage I make looks and you guys seem to enjoy my style of it. So I'm going to take that and share it with you. But keep in mind, I'm not saying this is the correct, professional, best way to do so. That being said, let's get into it. Let's talk about, let's talk about it. All right, so when we get into it, right, we have four steps, like I mentioned. The first step and the most important step is our lighting correction. We're gonna go ahead, I already dragged in three different clips that I wanna show you. We're gonna drag in a clip, go to your lumetri color, and if you don't have a lumetri color panel, window, lumetri color, and Lumetri Scopes. This is our Lumetri Scopes panel. This is our color panel. Second of all, in your Lumetri Scopes, if you don't have what you see here, um, this is what I'm gonna be using so you can reference this. Right click on the area, choose Vector Scope YUV, which is this thing, and then choose Waveform Luma, which is this one, which is only for the lights and darknesses of the shot. Go to Basic Correction, see where it says Black, so we start here. We take the blacks, we drag them down. We wanna get the bottom of this waveform as close as we can to touching zero. In a second, it touches zero, we stop. So click on our blacks, drag down. You can see that it's starting to move towards zero. We're at zero, that's good. Now, whites, we do the same thing, but we go to 100, and that's good. They're really close to 100, and honestly, it's getting a little too bright for my preference. And remember, these are only rules of thumb. Look at your shot, make sure it looks good. It doesn't matter what this says, in my opinion, if this, doesn't look good. So let's go ahead and take our shadows. We can bring those back. So bring those down. You'll notice the waveforms moving down. We can click the effects on and off to see the bypass. Looks okay so far, but there's more to be done. Highlights now. Let's drag up a little bit, just a tiny bit, or maybe even drag them down because I feel like we were losing some detail over here and now we have it back. And we can bring our shadows up a little bit so it's not too dark of a shot. Keep checking that filter on and off. Looks good so far. What we want to do last is our contrast boost the contrast up, and then exposure you can play with if you need to. But in my case, this shot's pretty well exposed to me, so I'm gonna keep it that way. Now this brings us to step number two, white balance correction and color correction on the individual shots, not the whole scene, just the shots. So click the shot again. But before we go to creative, we have to make sure our white balance is correct. So let's go ahead and instead of trying to eyeball it and guess what our white balance should be like, go ahead, click your eyedropper tool, Choose something that's white in your frame. In this case, a lot of it is white. So we can go ahead and click anywhere. Let's just click in the shadows. Click there. You can see it corrected it 1.3, negative 2.6. So I'm gonna boost the saturation just a little bit to add some, some life to it, if you would. And we'll turn that on and off. And you'll notice what a world of difference that made. Now, go to curves. And in my case, my camera is a little bit more on the red side. I don't like that. I feel like it's not as realistic as it needs to be. So go to hue versus hue, click that really quickly. Click on this red. See, this is a red I'm referencing. You don't have to click red. You can click on whatever your camera might need the adjustment for, if it needs the adjustment, and bring it down just a little bit towards the oranges, yellows. And that's a little bit more realistic on the red side rather than like a magenta, we're on red now. That's all I wanted to do. The next thing for the individual shots, coloring, like I mentioned, is just going to shadow tint, highlight tint under creative. Um, we can also go to our color wheels and match down here, but I'm gonna save that for when we color grade the entire timeline. So back to creative. I'm gonna bring my shadow tint just a little bit in the orange, my highlight tint just a little bit in the orange. And I always like the way that looks personally to me, that's, that's a good look. You might disagree and that's okay. I'm just choosing to make this shot a little bit more on the warm side while st still keeping my white balance accurate to real life. But now that we have our lighting correction and our coloring and our white balance done to the clips, the last thing and the final step we can do is color grade the entire sequence. Now, right now there's only one clip in this timeline. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna bring in two other clips and color them real quick and do what I just did to those. So you can see what they look before and after, and then you can see what the whole timeline looks like 
when I color grade once on an adjustment layer, that's the hint by the way, that way we can make sure we don't work in a volatile workflow. We can always delete the adjustment layer and restart without damaging our actual sequence. So let's do that real quick. All right, so I colored this clip, right? You can see the on and off before, after, looks okay. I did it really quickly, but that doesn't matter. Um, and then I took this clip and I colored it before, after. Now we're going to color grade the entire sequence. I made an adjustment layer already down here, but if you don't have one, click on new and then adjustment layer. I don't need a new one, so I'm gonna press cancel. You press okay. You'll then be given an adjustment layer, which you can click and drag onto your footage here. Click and extend it to the length of your shot or the timeline, in this case, uh, 24 seconds. Click the adjustment layer, not the footage. And just to be safe, go ahead and lock your footage and lock your audio. Adjustment layer, now I'm gonna drag up one more layer just for the next step. And we're gonna color grade this adjustment layer to make our shot look prettier. So let's go to color wheels and match. And in our midtones, once again, I'm going for a stylized look. You can choose whatever you want, but this is how you color grade the entire sequence. Uh, I'm gonna bring my midtones a little bit more on the yellow side still, maybe there. And while we're working, right, you can turn it on and off to see the difference. That's before, that's after. My shadows, I'm gonna bring into the blues a little bit. And then highlights, I'm gonna bring into the oranges as well. And I'm not gonna be too particular this time around, but that turned into that, and I, I quite like that. So the only other step I'm going to add is make sure that one, it looks good across all the shots, which I think it does. The next step and the most fun step to me is taking the creative tab opened, uh, going to sharpen, sharpening your footage, and then fading your film to get that film look that I use in my videos and my Instagram videos. If you don't follow my Instagram, you can click here in the link. But under faded film, I'm gonna crank that up to about 40. And you'll notice how everything gets a little washed out. The washed out part, totally fine. That's normal, that's to be expected. And then to step up this one more notch, uh, scroll through here for the look, which is just a color uh, LUT that's built in. I like to go with the Kodaks usually. Um, that's not the nice one. I'd say this one is pretty decent. So Kodak 5218. And then I'm gonna click and drag the intensity down to like 20. So before and after. And then if you really, really want the film look and you wanna do it the right way, unlock your video layer, hold Alt or Option, click and select, then holding Alt or Option still, click and drag up to duplicate like we did the last video. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you can click here or here, wherever the corners, and you can watch that video to understand what I'm talking about. Go to our effects, type in a Luma key, and then type in Gaussian Blur, click and drag those both onto the duplicated video layer, not the adjustment layer, so we can lock the adjustment layer just for safety, and we can lock the other layer just for safety again. So we only have this one selected, right? I'll double click that side to make it bigger for you. Go to effect controls at the top. If you don't have effect controls, go to window, effect controls, somewhere there. Let's scroll down while we're in effect controls. Under Luma key, type in 88, cut off 84. Gosh, and we're, for this shot, let's call it 45. That's too much, 25. If you turn that on and off, you'll notice in the highlights, only the highlights, you'll be greeted with a, a nice blurred Halation look if you want. That's what we talked about the last video, but we're gonna go ahead and click Luma key, hold command or control, click Gaussian War, command C, control C, copy it, go to the next shot, select it, paste it, command V, and in these highlights up here, you'll notice now they're bored a little bit. If I turn this on and off, you'll see what I'm talking about. And we're done. That's that's the whole color grading process. It's not very complicated. And to be quite honest, this last part I just showed you was all preference and not necessity, meaning that you could have left the video and not cared about this if you didn't want the film look and been done three minutes ago. Otherwise, thank you for commenting on the last video, which is why this video exists. I will see you guys in the future soon. I'm getting a haircut, so hopefully this mess is gone. And this coffee root beer thing is terrible. I'm sorry, no wonder it's getting discontinued. Goodbye. I bought two. Just not, just not good.